Hey folks, Anthony Skinner here, and I'm excited because today we are introducing a new series, the Enneagram and Team Building. Now this topic is really more important now than ever before because most of us are working remotely from home, which adds a layer of complexity to teamwork. But before we go any further, I want to introduce my good friend, author of The Road Back to You, host of the Typology Podcast, and host of this series, Ian Cron. Ian, how are you doing in week 12 of uh, our quarantine here in Tennessee? Well, uh, Anthony, I, I am living in a 2,600 square foot house with seven people and three dogs. <laughs> so, yeah, so, um, so we have my, my daughter and uh, her husband, my daughter and her fiance, my wife, myself, and, and three dogs. And by way of announcement, very shortly, we will be adding this eighth member to the family. Can you see her? Oh, look at that. <laughs> Isn't she great? What's her name? Pip. Pip. Uh, she's beautiful. Yeah, we're so excited. Is she a doodle? Yep. Oh, that's fun. Well, listen, so we're on this new series, The Enneagram and Team Building, and I was thinking before we move any further, it would be good to give uh, our folks a good definition of the word team. Yeah, so a team is a group of people with complementary skills who are committed to a common purpose for which they hold themselves accountable. Now, when I first read that definition, I said, wow, concise, pretty good, but I want to add something. It's this, a team is a group of people with complementary skills and diverse personalities who are committed to a common purpose for which they hold themselves accountable. That's good. Yeah, you know, I once, I once heard a psychology professor and, and consultant say something that blew my mind. He said, uh, every team in the workplace has problems and most of them are personality problems. That's an amazing statement. Yeah, it sure is. And in my experience as a, a corporate consultant, as an Enneagram teacher, I, you know, I've just learned that the knowledge and application of the Enneagram can dramatically lessen personality problems and build healthier, stronger teams. Yeah, and we know that you've been doing quite a bit of consulting uh, corporately. So why don't you tell us what happens when leaders and teams introduce and integrate the Enneagram on their teams? Okay, so that list could be very long, but, but here's a sample. Mm -hmm. It increases motivation, it improves communication, it promotes cooperation, it reduces conflict, it prevents misunderstandings, it, it elevates empathy to a whole new level, and it ensures that people feel seen, heard, and valued for their contribution to the team's efforts. Wow, such a powerful tool. And I mean, we've seen this in action. Um, so in this series, we're gonna answer the question, what do I need to know and do in order to effectively lead or work alongside each of the nine Enneagram types to build stronger teams? And today we're talking about? Ones, the improvers. <laughs> yes. So it's really important as we talk about each of these types that we understand the unconscious motivation that drives the way that particular type habitually acts, thinks, and feels, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, the improvers are ethical, meticulous, hardworking, and reliable, and their unconscious motivation is a need to improve themselves, others, and the world. Okay. So what can ones, their leaders, and their fellow team members do to help optimize the improver's performance? Yeah. So let's start with what happens when you have a one on your team who lacks uh, self-awareness. So an unskillful one really wants uh, to improve things, but when they're not healthy, that desire to improve things can degenerate into a need to perfect themselves, others, and the world, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it becomes a rigid perfectionism that hurts themselves, 
others and the team's efforts overall. So what happens when the improver is healthy and self-aware? They're remarkable. <laughs> <laughs> In short, like they're conscientious, they're detailed oriented people who you can count on to do what they say they're going to do and they'll do it right the very first time. Mm, that's good. So let's give uh, our listeners uh, and those who are watching some helpful tips uh, to become great leaders and team members. Maybe three tips. Uh, how about uh, tip number one? Okay, so with ones, focus on what is right, okay? So ones tend to be black and white thinkers. Um, so if the team discovers that some element of a, of a project or a plan is flawed, the one might panic and say, well, we got to throw the whole thing out and, and start over again. Uh, don't let them do that. Okay. It might just be that some piece of it needs to be tweaked. Right. Okay. So, so help them shift their focus from what's wrong in the project or plan to what is right with it. Okay. And tip number two. Okay. Provide sincere praise. Okay. So if you have a one on your team, I want you to remember that they hold themselves to mercilessly high standards. So you need to tell them when you observe them doing an impressive job. However, you need to be specific about what it is that is impressive about the way that they're doing their job or their inner critic will jump in really fast and write off the compliment as empty praise. Gosh, that's so insightful. Okay, tip number three. Ask for advice. You know, if you want to make a one on your team feel valued, then ask advice on how you can perform a task uh, better or how to improve your work because this is their superpower. They can help you improve anything, mm. okay? And so when you ask them advice, what you're saying to them is, I recognize that that's your gift. Use it for me. Mm. That's so good. So to recap, we're going to focus, shift the focus from what's wrong to what's right. We're going to provide sincere praise and be specific to break through uh, that inner critic. And we're going to ask for advice. Any closing thoughts before we end this episode? Yeah, I came across a quote by Brene Brown the other day, and I, I thought of ones right away. She says, you are imperfect. You are wired for struggle, but you are worthy of love and belonging. That's beautiful. That's so good. That's a great place for us to wrap this episode. So we love you ones and we look forward to our next episode of Enneagram and team building. Until then. See you later. Bye-bye.